The Miss Grand International 2022 competition has finally come to an end. What did you think of it? Did you like the production? Did your girls make it? Or were the girls that you were devastated that didn't? We're going to go all over that in this video. If you're new here, my name is Susie Greenberg. I am a former title holder and I have competed in both the Miss and Mrs. division. So recapping on the girls that made it into finals. I had a pre-preliminary list, I had a preliminary list, and now we have the actual results. So the girls that made it into finals are Brazil, Cambodia, Colombia, Curaçao, Czech Republic, Denmark, Dominican Republic, Honduras, Indonesia, Mexico, Nigeria, Paraguay, Peru, Philippines, Puerto Rico, Spain, Thailand, United Kingdom, Venezuela, and Vietnam. So some of the girls that were missing on this top 20 list that I know that several people were disappointed about were Costa Rica, Ecuador, and Netherlands, who were all on my list, and I know were on many other people's lists as well. I had several people comment on many different girls, such as Ecuador and... Um, even Costa Rica too, about that they thought that they were going to at least be in the top 20, may not be winning the competition, but at least making the top 20. Um, they must have just not scored as well on their interview and that, or other girls did really, really good and bumped them out of the spot. Like I said, this is a very highly competitive competition when you get to this level. So every little detail matters. Really quick before we dive into the girls' performances, I want to acknowledge the actual show itself, the production. I was very pleased with this production. Um, I think that the host country of Indonesia, they did a wonderful job hosting this pageant. I really, really loved how in-depth they went into the Indonesian culture with all of these women. Um, I, you know that a lot of times at a lot of different pageants and they'll kind of do like a culture day or something about it, but they just went all out um, throughout the entire, I mean, this is a rather long competition. I mean, I, I believe they're there for almost a month doing different like sponsor events and rehearsals and such, but they went a lot of their events that they did for about a good, I would say a good half of it, so a good two weeks worth of events, were just purely based on cultural events, like things that they didn't have to do, but they had them do. Um, just by all the back B-roll footage that they showed. It, I just know that if this was an experience that I was to be, I would have been so satisfied. This is the kind of experience you want when you go to another country, right? And you're in an international competition. And they all look like they're just enjoying themselves and having such a good time. And not like the fake leg. Oh my gosh, hi, smile for the cameras. Yay. No, they generally look like they're enjoying themselves and they're really involved in what they're doing. So, and then of course, like they just involve so much of Indonesian fashion and culture into the actual show itself, into um, all the different opening, into the opening numbers, into, into everything. So they had the... Um, which I did not cover, but if you watch, it's like the opening opening number that kind of like kicks off the entire pageant. Um, it's about like a two hour show and it's kind of, um, I didn't watch the whole thing because it's, it is rather long, but I wanna go back and rewatch it. But they basically are putting on this traditional like Indonesian play almost and the girls are all like part of the characters in this and um it's so beautiful and they did such a good job with that like it just all all, all around this is such a high level high level production um going into more let's go into finals into the actual production itself like I love the opening number like the thing is it wasn't so super complicated right like the dance numbers were very simple it was just like a like kind of stuff but you want it like that because now all these girls are professional dancers but it was still super entertaining it was super entertaining they all of the background lights and the images that they had on and the costumes and it all it all worked it all was so entertaining and then throughout the whole pageant 
just everything was just so beautiful. Everything was beautiful. Everything was elegant. Everything was graceful. And I think just like going back, if you were to watch my um, Miss USA finals recap video, I think Crystal Stewart wanted her production to be like this production, but it did, just didn't happen. <laughs> um, like if you, they, I've watched Miss Grand now for a few years and every year it just keeps on getting better. And I miss, while I am not a big fan of like the glitz style of pageantry, I really do love watching their productions. They just seem it just seems like a really good organization. I've never competed in it and I don't personally know anyone who's competed in this system, but I just see so much, so many good things. And I just really, really want to acknowledge the organization for putting on a great production. Quickly recapping each girl's performance. Brazil, I thought was really good, of course. I gave her top scores, um, however, I don't know if it was as strong as her prelim. Um, maybe it's just because I think Brazil is so good. So that way I kind of expect more from her. Uh, that might have been it. But um, I overall, I think, of course, she did good. She did. Um, she's just a very solid contender. Cambodia. She is good. She got high scores. Not as great as um, some of the other girls that I gave. Because uh, the thing with Cambodia, while I like her and I think she's good, she's just kind of missing a spark for me. And that, and when we're at this level of competition at international and we're at finals where you were narrowing down to 20 women, it gets really, every, everyone's so good, right? So you have to be super duper nitpicky about things. So that, that's why I had her as good, but not great. Columbia, good, solid performance from her. Um, overall, um, it, it was, it had enough confidence and sass without being too over the top. I really liked her performance and I gave her top scores. Curacao I thought did really good. I actually thought she did better in the uh, finals than she did in the prelims. I mean, she was fun. She was sassy. She was peppy. She was just bouncy. Just everything that they really love in this competition. I thought she looked great. Um, so yeah, I gave her really good scores. I really, really liked her. I thought she was going to move on. Um, obviously, the judges did not feel the same way as I did. But, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I love Czech Republic. Um, I'll get into this a little later on. But Czech Republic had became, like, probably my favorite contestant. Um... I thought she did really good. I thought I gave her good scores. I kind of liked her prelims a little bit better, but it was very similar to um, her finals and not much difference. I just liked some of the facial expressions she had in her prelims versus in finals, but you know, that I'm nitpicking here. <laughs> I still thought she did a really good job and I gave her really good scores. Denmark. I did not mention her before in any of my videos, um, however, I did notice her. Um, she was in one of my notes that I had. Um, when I remember watching the preliminaries, I remember looking at Denmark being like, wow, she has a stunning face. Like it just pops out of you. She's, she looks like a human Barbie doll. <laughs> and, um, but so from a beauty standard form, I thought she was going to score really high, but I didn't think that her performance was high enough to be in the competition. But um, obviously whatever scores that she did get got her high enough to be in the finals. Um, for her performance in finals, it was kind of mediocre for me. Um, like I said, beautiful, stunning phase. It just kind of stops you in your tracks. <laughs> it's, she has that stunning of features. Um, but um, her, her walk and her energy and her personality coming out, it was very mediocre for me. So I gave her kind of, I gave her good scores, but not as high as a lot of the other contestants and finals. I like Dominican Republic. She looks very natural to me. And that's one thing I have noticed about a lot of her performances. It doesn't come off as forced. The only thing about Dominican Republic is her active wear in finals. It came off a little reserved. She didn't seem as happy and as peppy and excited as some of the other contestants and I feel like that might have hurt her. I, I don't know if she was just holding back. 
I don't know if there was nerves, but she didn't have the extroverted personality that they kind of expect in a Miss Grand. Um, so I think that is what hurt her overall. I still think she did really well, and I think it would have been a wonderful performance, maybe in a different system, but for something like this system where they expect like all the over-the-top essence, <laughs> um, I think that definitely hurt her in the long run. Honduras was very sassy. Um, she had this awesome sway of her hips. All of her movements were very fluid. I love the technicality of, of her walk, but she didn't have that star quality. Like the, the, the glitter effect, I think people call it. I call it the it factor or the je ne sais quoi. The kind of performance that just kind of stops you and be like, oh my gosh, I love her. Like if I'm, I think it was a, very good performance but it didn't stop me in my tracks the way that some of the other girls did for indonesia i really like that she had her hair like half up half down i think it looked really good on her for her bone structure and just for the whole outfit i think it that was a very very good styling choice um her performance was good um, I can't say it was bad um i know she is kind of a fan favorite i know people love indonesia but she's missing something. I've been saying this since the beginning. There's something that I'm missing from her. And I, I don't I, I don't know necessarily what it is. I, I think, honestly, I think it's nerves. After watching her after this whole finals pageant, I think she had really high nerves. And I think that's what was affecting her performance overall. So um, she got, she did what she was good. But I think if she would have been more relaxed, I think she would have had a better performance. I think that's what I needed. I needed her to have a little bit more fun. Mexico did so good. I was so excited for Mexico. She was one of my top favorites. Her performance was wonderful and great. But then she slipped and fell. Like, not like a little, like, whoop. Like, she full out, like, woof. Like, fell, fell. But she got right back up and just kept on going and didn't even let it affect her. And for that, I still gave her good scores. When a girl, if a girl slips or falls, I always give them, I base it on the when they get back up, are they able to get back in the zone and keep on going? Or do they let it affect them and they get all like, like, that, like deer in the headlights? So for me, I don't, I don't take it against them. If they can power through a fall or a slip and act like it's nothing even happened, if anything, I may even give them a little bit of a better score because they're able to overcome and not let their emotions affect their performance. However, <laughs> um, pretty sure it affected her score. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee that her fall affected her score. But I want to give it out... <laughs> to Mexico. Girl, if you're watching this, you did great. I loved you. You know, I I would have put you in the top 10 if I was the judge. So you have, you know, this was just the way that the stars were aligned and I'm so sorry it happened to you. It happens to the best of us. It really does. So you're not alone. Nigeria called it called it i said that she was gonna be in top 20 and i was right so one thing i liked about her is actually some of her styling i was so worried about her styling but it ended up not being that bad it actually was pretty good so i have a personal thing i don't like the very big chunky heel that i know it's in fashion right now and it's starting to like show up in pageant fashion i don't like it in general i don't really love the big chunky heel chunky shoe but she wore a chunky heel for this active wear and I really liked it. I think it fit for the outfit. So I was okay with it. I actually really liked it. Um, her performance was good. She did exactly how I thought she was going to do. She was going to do good, good enough to get in top 20, but not beyond that. And that's the kind of performance I think she did. It was good enough to be in top 20, but I think beyond that, I think it was, that's where her, her limit was. So... Overall, she did a great job. I think, you know, good job for Nigeria. Um, you know, they, they don't and they don't have the same kind of support the same way that a country like Venezuela or Philippines or some of these other big pageant countries have. So with the resources that she had and with, 
you know, her ability, I think she did really, really great. So um, I, I was very happy for her placement. Paraguay was one of my cusp girls. So when she did make it into finals, I was not surprised. She was someone who was on my radar. Um, I, I, I thought she did okay. I mean, she, I, I would just not surprise that she made it into finals, but she was definitely more lower on the list and I did not see her going into continuing on in the competition. Peru is what I said beforehand. She's just a very charming contestant. I, I really loved her. I thought she did really great and I gave her really good scores. Philippines did a good job. However, I liked her prelims swim way more than I liked her finals. In her prelim, she just had a bit more personality, a bit more uniqueness. Uh, this just felt very run of the mill to me. Um, and not that it's bad by any means, but just her prelims one, she just had a bit more fun. She's just more herself. Um, her finals just kind of felt to me, felt like she was kind of going through the motions. And I, I don't know if that probably did hurt her, but I, I really wish I would have seen more of her personality and a bit more of her unique self in her, in her finals, the way I saw in prelims. I liked Puerto Rico's final. Um, I wasn't a hundred percent on her in prelims, but I thought I just had this gut feeling that she was going to go far. Um, and with her performance in finals, I was like, yes, okay, I, I agree with this. I definitely like this. I also think that the um, the outfit on her looked really good, too. And I think that sometimes will affect it. I mean, I know that um, it shouldn't, but <laughs> unfortunately it does. Um, so, um, yeah, I I was definitely all on board for Puerto Rico in finals. I liked Spain. I thought she did a good job. Um, I really liked just how it was fun. It was sassy, but it wasn't over the top. That's what I like. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a really good performance and I gave her really great scores. Thailand did good. I knew she was going to do good. She's a very solid contestant. Um, I did like her finals a little bit more than um, her prelims just because I like the routine that she did in finals a little bit better. It wasn't as distracting. However, she does this whole like I see you thing that I find really, really irritating. <laughs> I don't like it at all. <laughs> um, I think it also might have been though the fact that I was watching it on camera and I know sometimes watching it something on camera versus seeing it live in, in person on a stage can change it. However, I just, I really don't like that stuff. That's a personal choice. But if I was to take away all the ICUs, um, I, would I, I would have been more of a supportive, but I put my bias aside <laughs> and still gave her really good scores because I still think that she is a very good contestant. So she got good scores for me and I was very confident that she was gonna move forward in the competition. United Kingdom was cute. Um, however, rather than wearing stilettos during this part of the competition, she wore her toe shoes and she did her whole routine while being on point, which that takes skill and talent and that is difficult. I mean, it's bad. It's hard enough just to be able to be on point and work, do uh, ballet and point shoes, but to be able to do like the sassy walk on top of it. I mean, I thought it was still great. Um, so that just, it was just unique and it was something different. I mean, I didn't think that she really even went in her stilettos. I didn't think she was as good of a contestant to bypass some of the other ones. Um, but I definitely appreciated her. I, I, I give her kudos for trying her best and trying something unique. It, it was, it was very entertaining. Venezuela gave in my mind, a very standard Venezuelan performance. It, um, she had hit all her points. She, um, did her routine well. She was charming. Um, it was very stereotypical for Venezuela. Um, I would have loved to seen a bit more uniqueness in her performance, but I know that's not necessarily how they train Venezuelan girls. I like Vietnam. I thought she was really good. And I also learned that um, Vietnam had like no time to prepare for her this pageant, which um, I know 
in the unite um universe system for the United States where I'm from, uh, last year L Smith had like less than a week from winning nationals to um international f- competing for her competition. So I know how hard it is to you literally you can't prepare. Like you literally have to be while other girls have had months to rehearse and prepare for it, you just have to like jump right in. And that's I guess what happened to Vietnam. So this I mean, I thought she did really good scores. I gave her good scores. And I think the fact that she had absolutely no time to prep for international the international competition, I think on that, I think she gets even more respect from me. And I said this before in my last video, I'm going to say it again. Vietnam needs to compete in a different system and she needs to try again because she is way too good to give up right now. Um, I know it can be devastating going so far and not making it, but she, I mean, there have been so many girls who have not been able to progress as far in a certain system and then they switch systems and the combination of a bit more of a practice with it, along with maybe just the differences of scoring, they end up doing really, really well and winning the pageant. So, Vietnam, compete again. Get into another pageant system, please. I want to see you again. After the active wear, we had a elimination and we went into the top 10. And then the top 10 compete in a, a statement, a speech, and gown. Um, they are a little unique in where they do the statement first and then they do a gown and then after gown they have another elimination into the top five where they do the final question. Um, of the girls that made it into the top 10 were Brazil, Cambodia, Colombia, Czech Republic, uh, Indonesia, Mauritius, Puerto Rico, Spain, Thailand, and Venezuela. So I know there was Mauritius and she was not in the top 20. They had a fan vote and the fan vote, she won the fan vote. And the fan vote, rather than putting them in just finals into the top 20, it put them into top 10. So that is, you didn't even have to compete in the first round. She didn't, she was able to skip bypass all of activewear and go straight into statement and gown which that was, that's huge. <laughs> that's a huge safe card. Um, so Mauritius won it. Um, so that definitely, I think, did shake up, I think, the scoring a little bit. I was not prepared for that totally. Um, of the score of who made it in and who didn't, um, you know, we had some people, some favorites missing. Um, we had... Um, Dominican Republic, um, Philippines, um, so of uh, Vietnam, all they were all missing from the finals. Um, I don't necessarily agree with some of them, but you know, it's just differences in scoring and what you're looking for. Going into statements, um, this is a prepared speech that they write ahead of time. They have prepared. They have memorized and they um, there's a, usually a topic. The topic this year was um, stop war, I believe, like and stop the war, stop the violence. Um, and so this is kind of their time to shine, right? Because this is when they have time to prepare this ahead of time and memorize it. So everything, there should be no mess ups, right? This should be a very well performed and rehearsed statement. And I like this round of competition. Um, it's very difficult as I am a title holder. I have been, I've done several on stage questions. It can be very nerve wracking being on stage and being told something and only having 30 seconds to answer. Being allowed to prepare a statement ahead of time, it does give you a chance to highlight things you really want to cover, show your actual true public speaking skills. And um, however, this pageant system is definitely 
not as political as a lot of other systems. I have competed in very, very uh, big political systems. I have competed in Miss America like years ago, back when it was like super, when they, back when they did swimsuit and it was super, super political. So I have had awful questions and I've been attacked and I've had where they really expect you to have this really deep, substantial answer. This pageant's not like that. This pageant is much more fluffy <laughs> when it comes to, um, the contents of their speeches. It's much more like world peace kind of a pageant. Um, they, they don't expect girls to get really philosophical or to get really deep into politics, but they just kind of want them to have the heart of gold, I think, is what they're more looking for. Um, but they don't really necessarily expect them to have solutions of how we get world peace. So I have to take that into consideration when I'm grading this, but it's, I'm going to be a lot more harsh on these girls just because of my previous experience and what I, I, I really like meaty answers, but I know that most of the girls are not going to, and did not give extremely hearty answers in this competition. Brazil gave a very kind of stereotypical, you know, love, not war speech. However, it was gave with a lot of passion, a lot of conviction, and she definitely gave, had a good stage presence in her speech. So I kind of gave her like a, a medium kind of score. Um, and also I can understand her, which is very important too. <laughs> So I think Cambodia actually had a pretty good speech. The problem with Cambodia is I couldn't understand what she was saying. Um, I understand it's so hard and I'm not judging these girls whatsoever. I know how hard it is to be in a country where you do not speak the language or having to speak something that's not your first language. I've been there. I am not judging. That is very, very, very difficult. However, when I can't understand a word that you're saying, it's really, really hard for me to give you a really awesome score. Um, this is, I'm very pro translator. I, I like it when people use translators because I think it's much more fair to the contestants. I think it's very unfair um, to, and very biased to force girls to speak in a language that is not their own. Um, but um, I think she had some really, from what I could understand from her speech, I think she had some really, really good things in her speech and I really wanted to hear hers. So um, I gave her a good score but I I wish I could have given her a better score and I think I might have if I could understand the content of what she was saying. I liked Columbia's speech. I think it was a very effective speech. Mm -hmm. Yes it was kind of a more you know love not war. I, most of these girls have that kind of a uh, ethos in their speeches but I like with hers her speech was going on saying that peace needs to be a lifestyle. It needs to be a change that we do. It like, you know, going, you know, going to school or working out and getting, being healthy. Like it needs to be our decisions that we make need to be, let's make a decision of a peaceful, peaceful decision, not one of anger and of hate. And I really like that she brought it down to more of a larger level, like a substantial level. Um, her speaking ability too was very good. She would, she spoke slow enough. She spoke very, um, distinctly with good diction. Um, I thought she did a very good performance. Um, I gave her a good score in her speech. I, I really enjoyed her speech. Czech Republic's speech was by far the best. I gave her the best score out of all of the girls. Her speech was so heartfelt and so emotional. I I even got a little like misty eyed <laughs> when I was watching. I had to take a moment and be like, oh, oh. Uh, like she was just talking about how she has, you know, never experienced war before. Um, but, you know, there are girls who, you know, probably, she basically said that she's just so extremely lucky that she's never experienced war and that there are people out there who, um, she brought to a very personal level. She said I, to where she's like, there's a, could be girls out there who are 
better than what I do, smarter, prettier, more qualified for this than I am, but they'll never have a chance to be able to achieve the things that I've achieved because they ha are living in a, a war-torn country. And it was so, it just hit you in the feels so hard. And it was given with such passion and genuine concern. And you know, this is such an important, it, I, I, I loved it. It was my favorite one. He was also the only girl who actually gave somewhat of a solution. Um, she just basically said though that like the reason why I volunteer, the reason why I am here, the reason why like that I do what I do, that I volunteer on the front lines of refugee camps in Ukraine is because I want to make these people's lives better. And she showed a bit more action of uh, that. This isn't just her talking the talk. She's actually ha has already has a track record of volunteering and working in that philanthropy to do something about this. I was a little bit confused by Indonesia's speech. It wasn't really about war. It was more about like her self path of defying limitations and that you're only the only limitation to achieving success is your mind and how she couldn't have gotten to where she is now without the support of the Indonesian people. Um, and it was a good speech. It just, it was, I was a little confused kind of where it was going because there, she brought up a lot of different topics. Um, it was however given with a lot of heart and convic um, conviction. <laughs> um, but um, I'm not really sure on the scoring if there is a requirement to talk about the topic. I'm not sure. So, I mean, I thought it was good, but I just was kind of confused of what was the message <laughs> on it. Mauritius brought up more of the topic of how children are affected in war, how they're used for human trafficking, how they're used as for children's soldiers. Um, she kind of brought it more on that kind of side of it. Um, and she definitely, her, her solution was just let's come together and be, be one to eradicate all these atrocities in the world. I mean, it was, it was definitely a, you know, love, not war speech. It was good. Um, but I wasn't, it wasn't much better than a lot of the other ones. I really like Puerto Rico's speech. I thought it was very well done. It was very personal. She brought into her own life story about how she's actually originally from Russia and lived in an orphanage for about 10, I think like eight, 10 years, I believe, um, and then was adopted by a Puerto Rican family. And she basically said how her story of how love and acceptance and being this bridge of cultures and coming together from two different perspectives into one and creating something wonderful and ha having all of the love and acceptance of the Puerto Rican people, despite the fact that she was originally Russian, she's like, this is a perfect example of what we can do as the world. And um, she spoke very, very well. And then she did end the statement with her saying, I want to um, I have a message specifically for um, Vladimir Putin, who is the in the president of Russia, and she spoke to him directly in, in Russian. I'm not sure exactly what she said because I don't speak Russian, but um, it was basically she was scolding him. <laughs> but I loved Puerto Rico. I thought she did a wonderful job, and I thought she had probably the second best speech right after uh, Czech Republic. Spain's speech was not bad, but... I just didn't really feel like there was any substance to it. It was just, I feel like she was just saying a lot of stuff to say a lot of stuff. I don't know. I didn't get any, I didn't feel anything from it. And I didn't really, they were, she was just kind of making some points, but it wasn't really as much of a emphasis on it. So I, I, I kind of, I didn't give her the greatest score for her speech just because it just felt like she wrote a speech just because she had to write a speech and with no conviction. <laughs>
Thailand did have a bit of a thick accent, so it did make it a little bit difficult for me to understand her, but I was still able to understand what she was saying um, compared to some of the other contestants. Um, her answer was basically saying that war does not help anybody and that basically to create peace, we just need, it's all, it starts with you, right? It's by smiling to each other. It's by being kind to one another. Um, I will say, however, her speaking st skills were good. She knew how to emphasize. She would pause. She would say something and then really, she knew how to time it properly. And that's part of being a good speaker. So even though I didn't really necessarily understand maybe the exact words she was saying or I was struggling a little bit with it, I could still get, understand kind of the point what she was making. So she definitely got good points for presentation. Maybe not as much as on substance, but on presentation, she definitely got a good score. Venezuela had a good speech. Um, I like the fact that she brought up the fact that it so history kind of repeats itself and that how soon we forget of the conflicts and the war that have happened in the past. And she says that like there's so much war and conflict going around around the world, even in her own country of Venezuela. Um, so I think that she also, I like that she addressed that it's not just about like declared wars, right? It's also about things like military coups and dictatorships and just political unrest. I think, I like that she included kind of that into it. And uh, basically her answer was that, you know, we need to come together, unite as one, and we need to force our leaders to take necessary actions. Um, so, you know, I would love to have a much more meatier answer on that, but I do like the fact that she kind of did um, bring it around and kind of go beyond just, you know, the declared war, you know, that there are countries like Venezuela that have been going, having this political coup type, uh, political instability for years now. And that is just as destructive as an actual war. So all the girls who did the statements went right into the gown. There was no elimination between the two. And first up was Brazil. Um, Brazil did a good job again. I mean, I've I've always liked her. She's a good con she's a good contestant. Um, she did she did have a gown change. Um, every girl had a gown change, with the exception of Colombia. She was the only girl who wore her prelims out um, gown. I was not a fan of Brazil's gown. I mean, I wasn't a huge fan of her prelim gown, but it worked. It, she like was able to make it work. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't like the stripes. Personally, um, I, I think she, I think there could have been a gown that would have done much better. I mean, it's a it's a beautiful gown, but I just think that she would have looked so much better in something else. Just my personal opinion. But um, that's I think like whenever you pick your finals gown, you always I always think like, is this the gown that I want to be wearing when I'm being crowned? And that is not a gown I'd want to wear when being crowned. If, you know, if she loved it and it made her feel like a princess, that's all that mattered. But um, if I was styling her, I would have not put her in that gown. But she still looked fabulous nonetheless. So Cambodia's gown change, I actually liked. Um, I'm pretty sure that the gown was supposed to represent rice. Um, like a rice paddy field and I, I know that that is a huge rice is a huge staple in a country like Cambodia so um, I recognize that cultural significance there and bringing that in um, it was a beautiful gown too um, her performance was was good um, it was graceful. I would have liked a little bit more charm. She did kind of show it at the end in the very end of it but you need to bring that right out the very beginning. You can't wait until the end. You gotta like, cause a lot of times judges will make their snap decision like within the first five seconds. They already have a score for you. So you have to bring it in the beginning, um, not wait until the end. As I said, Columbia wore her same gown and I thought it was a very good performance. 
Um, however, I would have actually, the only critique I would say is I would have liked to see a little bit more of a face change. Um, when you kind of have the same face throughout the whole thing, it can come off as a little stale, a little stagnant. So I would have loved to have seen a little bit more of different emotions, maybe a really like big happy smile at one point, just to kind of give us a little bit more variety. I thought Czech Republic's gown looked really good on her. The gold and the green just really just made her features just really pop and really come out. It was a good gown choice for her and her coloring. I definitely approved of that gown for her. Um, also, like I said before, for Czech Republic, she's very good at giving face. She has lots of variety. She went from being, I'm so happy to be here, I'm so excited, to like, I'm gonna give you a smolder. And she does it very good transitions, which is really important, because if you don't have a transition, it looks fake. Um, I like how also when she, after she did her pose, just kind of like leg, leg body up, it, it worked really well with the audience too. Like they started like clapping and cheering when she did it. Um, it was little, it wasn't over the top, but it was just enough to give a little like, ooh, sass. So I really like her, of course. Like I said, by this point of the competition, she's like probably my favorite contestant. So she did a good job and I gave her good scores. For Indonesia, I liked this new gown choice for her. I like this gown much more than her prelims gown. Um, overall, I think she did a good job, but yet again, she is so nervous. Like she's able to mask it really, really well, but I've, I've done this enough, I've watched this enough to kind of tell. She's doing a really, really good job hiding the fact that she's nervous. So for someone who's not, has not much of a key eye on it, they may bypass it, but she is so nervous. She is feeling, her nerves are really getting to her and you can see it because how tense she is. Um, so I just wish she would have relaxed. If she would have relaxed and just had more fun I th and not let her emotions get to her, she could have really knocked it out of the park. Like it was good, but it could have been great if she just calmed down. <laughs> and I get it, emotions are high. It's, it's very, very hard. It's easier said than done, but um, it, it really does end up affecting your performance. Mauritius was good, but she wasn't great. Um, she got okay scores. Um, I, I mean, she was, she did get into the top 10 because she got the vote. So not to devalue her as a person, but it did kind of show in her, her walk and her performance. Um, you know, it, it, it's, her performance was a great national performance, but um, she needs to kind of up the ante to win an international competition. I really like Puerto Rico's gown performance. She had actually one of the highest scores of all the gown scores that I wrote out. Um, I thought she did really great. Um, I was kind of on the fence with Puerto Rico. Like I wanted to give her my full support, but there was just something I was like, mm, I, I am not fully convinced. But after this gown performance, I was convinced. I was like, okay, now now I'm supporting you. Now now I like you. I this is what I needed to see to be on Team Puerto Rico. Um, and so I thought she did a really great job. I thought she looked so graceful. A little bit more um a little bit more subdued than some of the other girls, but it worked for her. She just looked so graceful and elegant. Like I said, I gave her one of my best scores. I'm sad to say, I felt a little disappointed in Spain. It felt a little flat to me. I didn't give her, I gave her a good score, but I didn't give her a great score. Just because, I don't know, I, I just, it was lacking some of the stuff I've seen from her. Like I know she can do it. I don't know if it was her headspace or what it was, but she didn't shine the same way as before. So um, yeah, I would have loved to seen a little bit more from her, but say lovey. Thailand did great. Um, her gown choice had a cape on it and I liked she didn't overdo the cape. Thank you for not overdoing the cape. Like she she held it up, she played with it a little bit and then she dropped it. Like you don't need to be holding your cape the entire time. You can do part up, part down, that's okay. Um, you want the cape to be an accent. You don't want it to be a whole performance of a cape performance, right? <laughs> 
Um, she did tone down on some of the cutesiness, which I appreciated. Um, so it was still very fun and fun and flirty because that's the kind of contestant that she is. Um, but it overall, it worked for her. I, I, I liked this performance from her. Lastly, we had Venezuela, and I definitely loved this gown on her more than her previous gown. Um, this gown just suited her more. It was just a very classic gold gown, but it looked really good on her. It, it fit her well. Um, it did, though, however, have this, like, headpiece thing like, kind of on here. Um, I liked it, but I would have changed the earring. Like, go for the earring or go for the headpiece. Don't do both together. If you were going to have an earring, like, wear, like, like, a big post or something instead of, like, this big dangly earring with it. It was just a little too much. They feel like they were competing with each other, so that's a styling thing I would have changed on it. Um, Performance-wise, I, I know I keep on saying this about her, but it was a very standard Venezuelan performance. Like, it was just very cookie-cutter Venezuela. You know, it was it was a very good performance, but it, you know, it was, it wasn't super rehearsed, but it definitely, it wasn't, didn't have the same exuberant personality traits that some of these other countries put forth. So very, very good. I liked it. But like I said, true Venezuela performance. We then had a, another elimination round into our top five. And our top five that were picked were Brazil, Indonesia, Thailand, Czech Republic, and Venezuela. So I wasn't a hundred percent agreed with this top five, but I do understand kind of where they're coming from with it. I wasn't totally upset with it, but at least the people who I thought did really, really good, who I really loved were in here. So I was satisfied. Um, so they then had a top five question and they were all asked the same question. And their question was, um, I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit because it's a bit long of a question, but um, there is currently a war between Russia and Ukraine right now, and President of Russia has ordered an invasion of Ukraine, killing its people, the destroying its architecture, and creating a uncertainty for the future. And then he said, um, ended with, um, if you had an opportunity to talk to Vladimir Putin, um, what would you say to him? And that they had one minute to give their answer. Um, I really liked this question. I thought it was very on brand for the organization's platform. It was very specific. Um, it was detailed enough that, um, because some of these questions are sometimes so broad, They're like how can I talk about this in just a couple seconds? It was, that was a good question. I'd like to give them one minute because 30 seconds is such a short amount of time to answer these questions. So I like the question. And like I said, um, all the girls had a chance to say it and they all said the same question. I do like when all the girls get the same question because it's just a bit more fair I, I've done both. I've done where we all have the same question and or we all have different questions. And I think it just does a better job of when you're comparing like scores with each other um, because you all get the same question. So, um, cause if you have different questions, one question is going to be harder than the other. There's no doubt about that. So I thought this question was a good question for this pageant. So a lot of these girls didn't really answer the question and it wasn't really like a message to Vladimir Putin, which, I mean, I'd probably give him a little bit lower score if it was me, but I don't really think they were judging on that. <laughs> um, Brazil, um, her answer was basically if, you know, that um, we all share the same fate as humanity and that um, war only brings brutality and that we need to, um, you know, rise above. So it, it was okay. <laughs> Indonesia, um, did use a translator and I'm very, very glad that she did this. I am all for people using translators. That's what it's for. Um, she basically said that with this war, there is no happy ending. 
um, and that um, kind of more of a need to, you know, bring about peace so we can have smiles on our children's faces. Um, there wasn't a ton of substance to the speech, but it was delivered with full of passion. And I know she got a little like choked up in a moment of it. Um, so it was given with a lot of conviction. Thailand, again, was very calm, knew how to emphasize, have pauses, very good public speaking skills. Um, she basically said that, um, Mr. Putin, you're a beast and you are basically being a monster, killing all of these people, and every human deserves love and respect and to live in peace. And since she got the crowd involved, like, who's with me? So um, it was just more of like a shame on you, like what you're doing. <laughs> Czech Republic, hands down, best answer. Um, she started off by saying that she is from the Czech Republic and her country was occupied by the Soviet Union for years. And her family members have told her stories and are constantly reminding her that, you know, of what it was like back then and that this oppression is not the way to live and we need to learn from history. And she then went and said, so she had a chance to talk to him. What she would do is she would force him to look at look into the eyes of all the people that she is a, that he is affecting and she mentioned mentioned that she has volunteered to work in the refugee camps in ukraine and she has seen the devastation firsthand and then she would ask him why what's the point of all of this like what are you trying to accomplish and is all this destruction that you are creating is it worth it and it was, it was, I mean, she is the best public speaker in this whole group. Um, she had the best answer and I thought she did so good. I gave her very good scores. Venezuela pretty much didn't even answer the question. <laughs> she basically said, um, war is not the answer and I want to be a spokesperson for peace and, um, I want to do that through this organization. Basically, she she didn't answer the question. She answered the why me, like why I should be queen answer. So it wasn't a bad answer. It just it didn't had nothing to do with the question, which if what you're looking for is just an eloquent speaker and you're not judging any of it on the content of the question, she did great. But if you're basing off of the content of what they're saying, it wasn't that awesome. So I would say her score really depended on what the grading criteria was. So I wanted to say that I was a little disappointed that Puerto Rico didn't have a chance to answer the final question. Finally, when I'm all on board for Puerto Rico, she gets eliminated. <laughs> and but I would have loved to see her answer because the fact that she was at one time, um, was you know from Russia and was at one time a Russian citizen I would have loved to hear her answer that question so I guess we'll never know but I think that would have been really really great so that concluded the judging portion of the competition and now we finally got to crowning the exciting part that we've been waiting for the whole evening um, in fourth runner-up um, well, actually, before I get to that, they did a fifth runner-up. All the girls who got eliminated, who were in top 10 but got eliminated, they all, five of them, got fifth runner-up. And they all got little sashes and crowns and such, which I thought was kind of nice. So, finally, fourth runner-up was Czech Republic. Boo. Boo. I was not happy about this. I was very, very sad about this. Justice for Czech Republic. You did not deserve fourth runner up. Maybe not winning the crown, but at least a higher ranking. You deserved way better than fourth runner up. I would have even been happy with second runner up, but not fourth. Come on. And it's not because she's not pretty. She is stunning. She's got an amazing body. It's not like 
she was all, you know, brain and no beauty. She has it all. The, the three B's of this competition is beauty, body, and brains. She's got the brains. Okay, that's one of the th three B's. Not how I was, I was very upset about this. She did not deserve fourth runner up whatsoever. Czech Republic, Mariana, I love you. You have a place in my heart and keep on fighting the good fight because you are a good one. And I feel this deep connection with you and I've never even met you. So keep on fighting. I, I have your back all the way. Now that I got that out of my system, <laughs> calm down a little bit, we can get into our third runner up, which was Venezuela. Um, this I definitely thought was an appropriate ranking. Um, she was good, but she was not as good as some of the other girls. Her answers were very, like she didn't even answer the question. Um, she was good, but she just didn't shine the same way that some of the other girls did. Second runner up was Indonesia, another ranking that I thought was appropriate. Um, and I truly do think that it was the nerves. Um, when you look at the video footage, when she, they're like just as the three of them standing up there, she's like, she, she looks like she's shaking like a leaf. She looks so nervous. And I really do think it was the nerves. Um, you know, she, I know that she has the heart and the passion for it. Um, but honestly, being calm is a really important part of it. And I think she kind of self-sabotaged herself, which is unfortunate, but it happens. It, this is a very clear example of when it happens. So I do think that ranking was a deserved ranking and I agreed with it. So for first runner up, we had Thailand. Um, she was, you know, so it was between her and Brazil and Thailand was, um, she was really great. She, um, I thought that she'd had a really great performance. I knew that she was going to be strong from beginning to end. Um, while I didn't think her answers maybe had the most meat to them, she was such a good public speaker, like in technique. So... She's definitely, when I was between the two of them, I'm like, I don't know who's going to win. Like, I, I really think, I thought it could have been her for a moment there. Um, and I, you know, the Thai people should be proud of her. I think she was a very, very good queen. Um, I, I really like, I really like Thailand. And um, I do think that she, she definitely deserved, you know, either to be first runner up or to win the title. So I was definitely okay with her ranking. The drama leading up to the final moment, they did such a good job of production wise. It was, it reminded me a lot of the Miss USA 2019 when Chesley Crisp won. The when they like circled around the contestants and the lights and stuff and they built this drama and it was such a great moment. I loved it. And then they announced our queen, which was Miss Brazil. Miss Brazil is now our Miss in Grand International 2022. Um, overall, I mean, I liked Brazil. I mean, I've said this from the very beginning. Brazil has been one of my favorite contestants. Um, I, I was very happy. Brazil won. I am very happy. Brazil won. Um, and I think I was very, I was still kind of upset because I wanted Czech Republic to be a lot higher. However, I'm pretty sure that with this competition, the final score, like the final ballot cast of who they pick the queen, it's based off of their entire performance from beginning to end, kind of like this like cumulative overall score. And if I'm looking at it from that perspective, yes, Brazil definitely, I think, is worthy of the crown. If we're just purely basing it off of like the, if like all the scores were erased and we're just basing it on speaking skills, then no, she didn't. Because while she was good, her, she wasn't great. But if we're looking at this cumulatively, right? Like if we're looking at all of her stuff, then yes, yes. Then I definitely think she's worthy of being a queen. 
Um, I really, I, I'm very happy for her. I, sh she did a, such a good job throughout and I was, I was very pleased with her being our queen. So congratulations to Miss Brazil for your win. And I believe, um, I think I heard them say, I believe that this was the very first time Brazil has ever taken the title. So congratulations to the country of Brazil. So that concludes our competition. What did you think about it? Did you enjoy the competition? Were you disappointed? What do you think about the ranking? What do you think of our new queen? Um, what do you think of the production, right? Like, bravo to the production. I mean, you can all know my opinion. I love the production. I thought they did a great job. But what did you think about it? What were, how did this pageant compare to other pageants that you've seen in other pageants in the past? Not just this system, but in other systems too. So put your comments below. I read every single comment and I try to comment on them um, when I can. So please, I wanna hear your opinions. Well, thank you so much for watching this video and hearing my comments on how I thought that the pageant was performed. And we will see you soon in a future video. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye.